Hello, Mark. It's lovely to talk to you this morning. Um, and I've got a few questions to ask you about Always Adam. My first question is, what is Always Adam about? Yeah, well, good morning, Catherine, and thanks for the opportunity to talk to you. It's about a series of what ifs, really. It's not science fiction in the little green men genre. It's about science, not quite fact. So it's pushing the boundaries without stretching credibility too far and asking what would happen under certain circumstances if these things came to pass. Right, good. Oh, well, that sounds fascinating already. <laughs> so because of what you've just said, can you give us a bit more information about how you um, and what inspired you to write the story in the first place? Yeah, of course. Well, a number of things, really. I mean, as in my day job, I have to look at um, situations and ask what if certain things changed? What would the resulting, what, what would happen? And I've said to the lads I work with, it's a good uh, mechanism occasionally to turn the telescope the other way around and just see whether you've got things completely wrong. And if you're in the wrong place and are you the good guy? You know, it's often worth asking yourself that. And we hear about uh, British exceptionalism quite a bit in the process of in the Brexit process or whatever. And it is worth thinking that there is always a survivor bias. And because we're here, we assumed it was predestined that we would be here. But we're the product of a million chance happenings. The fact that we're all still here talking to each other and that extends to more than just the individual. Right, right, okay. Well, that opens up a whole different world. Um, and obviously, um, you know, we are in a different world now uh, than even six or nine months ago. So obviously the book has uh, mentions I hope I'm not spoiling anything here, of viruses and mentions of vaccines. So do you think there are any parallels between what you want to do with your story and, and what is actually happening at the moment? I think there are, there are topics in common rather than parallels. Uh, having said that, I think the, the current coronavirus situation has brought home to all of us that we're only animals and we might be able to put people into orbit and break the speed of sound and communicate with people in different continents. But when it comes to dealing with a microscopic virus, we're almost as vulnerable now as we were 10,000 years ago. And it's only through the ingenuity of the scientists that we're getting past that. But in the meantime, this is a, a life-threatening situation. And it's a sobering thought that there isn't a lot we can do about some things in the very short term. Absolutely. Yes. So then um, that, that brings me really to, to, to my final question, just in, in this sh short um, discussion about the book, um, is, is having written this, obviously, in a very uh, strange world, do you have any plans for any more or would you carry this theme on or is there something else that you feel that you want to write about? <laughs> That's a very good question. I mean, there are a number of things there. I think without giving too much away, there are a lot of unanswered questions in the current book. Mm. And I would like to set about answering some of them to the extent that there are answers. Uh, there are other things I would like to write about completely differently. But looking back at, at Always Adam, science over the decades has had a habit of catching up with the fiction. And I think we might see something like that here. In fact, without giving too much away, we have seen some of it already. And I would very much like to write about that and continue on the same subject matter. That's great. I would look forward to that very much. Right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, and it's been lovely to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. Pleasure.